Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video, we're back again with the Lunar Lander script. And this time we're going to just roll up a brand new flight and see how it goes. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Let me switch camera views here. Make sure I go to that side. All right, so our most recent flight, which I didn't record, was from that location to that location with a 71.62% efficiency, not so great. And my best flight overall so far is from that location to that location with an 83.7, so not too bad. But let's go ahead and continue, and this time we're just going to do number one. We're going to do a brand new flight that we've not done before. So let's go ahead and roll the dice and see what we get. And I think this time I'm going to try to fly strictly from the uh, virtual cockpit and see how that goes. Alright, so it's going to place the lander, it's going to place the target site, and I made a small edit to the script so that it will just automatically place the sun instantly. I found that I was making that selection every time, so it didn't make sense for me to be prompted. So I just uh, went in and just did a little edit on the script so it would just always do it immediately. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is just take a quick look around, and I can see, you know, I've got crater walls all around me, so I think a good pilot would probably also, um, you know, be aware of their surroundings, so I think they might do a walk around. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say that, you know, the pilot or the crew is getting out of the ship and just kind of doing a walk around on the platform to see just what the situation is. And yeah, it looks like we are, you know, in a crater, so... Uh, and I think, you know, they might even, you know, be up here walking around just to get an idea overall of uh, the situation. So it looks like once we get clear of the crater, we're basically okay. Uh, we have some, oops, we have some uh, hillsides over here to be aware of, but uh, mainly just get away from this crater. All right, so let's go ahead and pan down, and I'll do my best to minimize the amount of panning, and uh, when I do pan the camera I'll try not to do any quick whip arounds or anything like that all right so we're going to open the retro doors I'm going to set the hover hold to uh, vertical speed even though we're not using it just yet all right now I want to I'm going to power up this side and there's no power button but uh, the documentation tells you and uh, Dimitri also reminded me of this that if you press the left shift key so you have two shift keys on your keyboard one on the left one on the right if you press the left shift key and hit escape, it'll power up that side. And if you do the right shift key and escape, it'll power up that side or power down. So I'm going to bring up burn time calculator, similar to what we've been doing. I'm going to switch the engines over to hover. And I know that I have to get up out of this crater, so I'm thinking I might want a little bit more hover than usual. Usually I do around 40, something like that. So maybe let me do 55 this time. Just want to make sure I get up and out of this crater. So I'm currently at... 280 I need to be at 146 so I believe it'll be a bit faster if I uh, rotate to the uh, to the counterclockwise direction all right so I think we're pretty much ready to go let me do one more thing let me go ahead and scroll this over and maybe zoom in once or twice uh, maybe maybe one more let me just go ahead and go with that zoom level for now that way as our as our green line starts to grow we can uh, we can watch things I will be using another MFD in this flight called uh, GPS BTOL. I was made aware of this just yesterday by somebody named Pred Attack. On they responded to one of my videos, so thank you for telling me about this this MFD. So I'm going to go into Target and I'm going to target the information that we have up here. And the way we have to type it in is like this: so 108.4. And since this does not have a negative number in front of it, it means that this is going to be uh, this is going to be east, and then our latitude, we're going to do 57.3, and since that does have a negative number, it means it's going to be south. If this did not have a negative number, it would be north, and if this did have a negative number, it would be west. So I'm going to enter that in, and now I just want to do a quick sanity check. So according to this information here, my bearing is 146.25, and this says my bearing is 146.3, so those agree. And this says my distance is 3139. This says my distance is 3139. So those agree. So if you bring up this MFD, type in some information, that inf and, the, and then that does not agree with what you have there, you probably flipped your east or west or your north or south. But everything is in agreement. Now, we're not going to be using this right away, but we'll get into that in a moment. Let me go ahead and go back to burn time. 
And so let's get underway. We are in rotation, so let's burn and turn. All right, so, so now I'm just rotating around to 146. So we still have a little bit more to go. We're still ascending a little bit. So about right here, we'll kill. And just a little bit more about right there, I'm going to say. Now full power on the main. Now I'm going to tilt back a little bit because we <clears throat> did see that we had a crater to get out of. So hopefully that's enough. It's really hard for me to 500, see. 400, 300, 200. Okay, yeah, I think we just barely made it up over the crater. But I don't want to pitch too steeply because I'm going to climb way out. But uh, I, I can't really see where I'm going, so I'm going to bring up a uh, generic camera and I want to have my forward facing view. Lift up my landing gear and now I can see I'm free of any mountains and cliffs and whatnot. So I'm going to go mostly level horizon now. And now that, that part's taken care of, I'm going to focus mostly on um, watching this green line grow until it gets over my location. And now I don't have to worry about hitting a hillside, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up this GPS VTOL MFD. The green line tells me where I need to be going, the, uh, the yellow tells me where I am going, so there's a little bit of a disagreement there that we need to take care of. Alright, time to back off the main engine. Maybe a burst. And you can see now that that green line is pretty much touching the target, but it's a little hard to see for sure, so let's zoom in a couple levels. Scroll down. And scroll over. And scroll down again, just to kind of get that in the center. And scroll over. And zoom in a couple more times. Alright, so we're almost there, but we need just a little bit more. So I'm going to use just a little bit of a control thrust. A little bit more, a little bit more, okay. And I feel like we're, you know, we now have enough velocity to ensure that we're gonna make it all the way to the target. So now I'm gonna take a quick sip of water. We need to stay hydrated. Okay, so we have about 3,000 kilometers to go, so we have quite a ways. So what I'm going to look at now is this, this little bit of disagreement that I have here. So we're, it looks like we're out by about 0.2 degrees because this is 146.8, that's 147.0, so they're pretty close to being matched. But since they are off a little bit, I'm going to see if I can uh, make those agree a little bit better. And since I'm still this far out, I should be able to do that with just a little bit of linear translation. So I'm going to go into the level mode here. I'm going to switch to linear. And let me think for one second about which way I need to go here. So I am pretty much going southeast. And it looks like I need to push my line a little bit farther south. So if my vessel is going like, you know, southeast and I want to go a little bit more south, I need to push my vessel to the right. I think that's correct. So let me put in a bit of translation here. I could also rotate the vessel and use a little bit of main engine, but I think we're far enough out we can just use translation. So let me just try to translate over to get that 147.4 and 147.2 and, you know, so they agree with each other. And I can see in map MFD that, you know, I'm bringing my line down. So these things agree pretty well. You'll probably notice when they tick over to the next number, they don't tick an exact, uh, an exact match one will probably be a little bit ahead of the other. Yeah, that one went five, and then that one's going to go five. So there's still a little bit of a disagreement there, but I'm going to turn off the level horizon, I'm gonna, and I'm going to warp time forward until I'm at 1,500 kilometers from the target, and then I'm going to check in on everything again and see how we're doing, because I think that as we go forward, these lines might track one way or the other, so I don't necessarily need to try to get them in perfect match right now. Oh wow, I way, way overshot that 1500. But let's uh, take a look, let me go level horizon again. And we are, so now we're off by about 0.3, okay. So let me uh, rotate the vessel so that I'm, you know, facing 
perfectly forward. That's the wrong way. My bad. About like, about like that. And again, now we're about 0.03, and uh, it looks to me like we need to continue pushing the line farther to the south. So we'll do what we did last time, and push the vessel to the right. And I'm just going to hold down that translation, and we should see, if we look closely at map MFD, we should see our line bending a little bit or moving. And now we're off by about 0.2, off by about 0.1. Okay, so those are really close again. I'm going to... Let me zoom in down here. Let me zoom in again. Scroll over. I wish I could just kind of like put my mouse on here and scroll wheel in uh, to that location, but can't do that. Okay, so we're zoomed into the maximum level. And here, you know, the screen line kind of indicates that we're missing the target a little bit, but I think what's actually happening is that you know, as we move farther forward, uh, this line is just tracking a little bit, but it says we're only off by 0.1, so I'm not going to mess with it beyond this because I'm not quite sure how the alignment's going to play out. But we're moving quite fast. We are going to have to uh, do a braking burn, so let's get the vessel rotated backwards. So let's go back to trans uh, rotation, rather. I'm going to bring the nose down just a little bit so we're level with the horizon. And then I'm just going to uh, turn the vessel around until this line is facing straight backwards. A little bit of time warp to speed that up. Come out of time warp and kill rotate. And we got that pretty close. All right, so now we are facing exactly against the direction of flight. Our numbers are really close to being aligned. Let's see, so now we're facing the other way. So let me actually put in just a little bit of translation in the other direction because we're facing the other way and just see if I could make those match a little better. I think they're now ticking almost in perfect sequence, yeah. All right, so really close now to the time to begin the braking burn. So let's bring up burn time on this side. Let's make sure we switch our engines. It's probably a little bit hard to see that. Let me go ahead and pan down like that a little bit. And switch engines over to main. And now we're going to put in uh, that number, 1567. We'll probably go a little bit higher than that because I know that we're going to accelerate as we move forward. So let's go 15. Let's go 1575. 1575. Okay, and according to burn time calculator, we need to begin the burn when we're 48. Uh, just just under 49 kilometers. All right, I'm going to turn the level horizon back on. I'm going to go ahead and set some uh, velocity hold here. So, you know, when I turn this on, I'm going to say it's okay if I'm descending up to about 2.7, uh, you know, something like that. We're at 42 kilometers. We're falling at 160 meters a second. Now, one thing I don't know is I don't know the elevation at the area where we're going to be landing. So one thing I'm also going to do, I'm gonna bring up my generic camera. I just wanna take a look at where I'm going. So that's going to be my back camera. So that's back down, let me go one more. So that's my back camera. So it looks pretty okay, a little hard to say for sure. But eventually this is going to be the camera we're going to want when we begin our braking burn. This will show us our target. But for now, I'm going to keep an eye on GPS BTOL because I kind of want to make sure these numbers are mostly in agreement because you know if we're off by even a little bit you know uh, this is certainly close enough that we'll see the target but the closer these are to being perfect the more likely we are to be exactly in line with the target <clears throat> so with that in mind since these are ticking just slightly out of sequence just going to put in a little bit of thrust, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. There, I think they're pretty much in sequence now. So I can't, I don't want to get distracted by that anymore. Uh, one thing 
that might not be a bad idea would be to just go ahead and zero out our descent rate so that I'm not panicking when we get closer to the time to begin the burn. So I'm going to say at 120 kilometers from the target, I'm going to go and do press the hover hold just to make sure that our descent rate is um, you know, closer to zero. And while we're waiting on that, I'm going to take a sip of water. These flights don't really take much more than like 15 or so minutes on your own, but with my commentating, it probably will go a little bit over 20 minutes. But I'm, gonna go, I'm going to go ahead and just record the entire thing in one shot rather than have a second video that's only five or six minutes long. Okay, so we're coming up to about 120 kilometers, and I just don't want to have to worry about my my vertical speed. So I'm going to go ahead and start zeroing that out so that uh, when I do begin the burn here, I'm not panicking, thinking I'm going to hit the ground. And I'm going to say that's good enough, so I'm going to shut that off and turn off all the hover right now. Okay, so we're not, uh, you know, it'll take time for that to build back up. Now all eyes need to be on our distance here because we're going to begin this breaking burn very soon. I'm going to just do a bit of a correction here really okay. quick. There we go. And so at, let me check our speeds really quick. I don't have time to do that. So we're just going to begin the burn at 49 and burning. All right, so I think we might actually pass the target just a little bit. Let me bring up our generic camera. Next, previous gets me over to the down camera the fastest. And sometimes I've noticed it can be a little bit hard for me to identify the target because the color of the landing pad, unfortunately, doesn't have a lot of contrast. Uh, if it were like a, like a maroon, like this cockpit or something, I think it would show up a little bit better. But it's this kind of like bluish teal color which doesn't have a lot of contrast with the ground so I have to really focus on it I think I see it right there but sometimes I've gotten confused between little shadow dots and the actual target okay zoom in yeah that sh actually that's our target right there yeah that's what I'm talking about see that thing there sometimes I think that's the target but it's actually that so it looks like we are going to maybe pass it just a little bit. Nope, we did not. All right, excellent. Translation. All right, we need to translate to the right. And okay, we're falling. We're at 13 kilometers. We've got quite a ways to fall. But I think it might be better rotating, putting the target in front of me. I think I'm actually going to do that. So if I rotate and put the target in front of me, I have you know better control with main engine and retro engines. Because sometimes the translations just aren't enough. All right, so I'm putting that little dot right in front of me. About right there. So yeah, I think I need a, just a little bit of a burst on the main engine to move the vessel toward the target. All right, so we need to keep a, kind of keep a watch on our altitude here. Let me go ahead and zero that out because we are falling pretty fast. Maybe not zero it out quite yet. And zoom out a level. Yeah, we're falling really fast. I'm going to go ahead and zero out my descent. And shut that off here in a moment and take out all the hover. Okay, so we need to start taking out some of that forward velocity. Oops, took out too much. That was inefficient. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Translate a bit in this direction. And now I want to zero out my descent again, just because I, it's hard for me to t determine. Rotate translation. Rotation. Translation. Okay, we need to translate a bit to the right. A bit back. And let's turn off the hold, get rid of the hover. 
And let's put down our gear. I have forgotten to do that. Gear down. All right, gear down. So a little bit of, uh, one thing I can do also is bring up this and it'll give me a little bit better information as well. Because you can see now the arrow's pointing toward the target so I'm not guessing so much anymore. But we're at 700 meters going down towards the target quickly. 500. And 400, 300 meters. Go ahead and zero out. 100 meters. 50 meters. 20. And a little bit of translation to correct our. Five, four, three, two, one. And we can ignore that five, four, three, two, one. Rotation. Not sure why I get that five, four, three, two, one. I'm not sure what that's in reference to, but uh, it's obviously not in reference to our. Translation actual all right so we're going to be down on the target let's just look at the external view to see our touchdown because that'll be interesting a little bit longer to go than i thought so let me just make sure 40. yeah we're we should be good there nice soft touchdown there on the pad so congratulations flight completed successfully and we got a score of 79.28 percent that's not terrible uh it's not as good as i have done but overall not bad i think when you get um, I'm not quite sure what the number is, but when you get above a certain percentage, it means you're well within the window of whichever uh, whichever difficulty setting you're on. I think right now I'm on two or three. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's two at the moment. But with this kind of a score, you should easily be able to dial up to three and possibly even dial up to four, which is uh, getting to a point where it becomes very difficult to make the landing without running out of fuel. All right, so we're uh, about 22 minutes on this video. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. But what I'm going to do, because I think this might be interesting, I'm going to take the uh, information from this flight here, and I'm going to put it down in the description below. I think it consists of either four or five lines. I can't remember. But what you can do is you can take that information from the description, copy, paste it into your LLTXT. Um, if it's four or five, so you'll have, you'll have your, your last flight and your best flight. So you'll have a total... Of either like eight or ten lines so you would just want to replace like the first either four or five with whatever I have in the description down below if you want to repeat this flight um, and if you do please uh, post your results down below let me know how you did you know did you do way better than I did I got 79.28 percent did you get like 85 percent or something like that uh, be sure to uh, post your results in the comments and like I always say if you can record a video of it even better record a video and post a link to your video in the comments down below and I will be sure to watch your video of this flight. So with all that said, that's going to wrap it up for this video and I will see you next time.